work at this ungodly hour, and uh, as I see some people that actually didn't participate in the production, uh, I, so I think I, I have something interesting to say uh, to you. This is one of those uh, post-mortem presentations. That means, uh, basing on the assumption that it's that it's better and it's fun to learn at others' mistakes, we will uh, tell you about uh, the game we've just finished, uh, how the production went, what went okay, what went not so okay. It will, will be quite a practical presentation with lots of uh, you know interesting cases and uh, very down to earth uh, data and i start with talking about the game itself to get, give you some context about uh, you know help you understand uh, the uh, the things that went okay and the mistakes we've made and to give you some background about the cases i, I will, will be talking about uh, I'm uh, from a company called 80 Games, and it is about another case solved. Uh, that's uh, that's a game we've just finished. It's a, a mobile game. It's a detective uh, puzzle game set in the interesting times of sugar prohibition. And here is the first uh, case. We wanted to make a detective game. The perfect uh, setting for the game is, you know, is this noir crime stories with prohibition alcohol and stuff, but uh, if you think about uh, going to the App Store, uh, alcohol is a uh, no-go, so we had to find so something else, and we devised the setting where uh, this new law was introduced uh, about, you know, uh, health, lifestyle, and the sugar was banned. So it's, uh, it's a game where we can use all the prohibition uh, you know, themes and motives, but uh, with sugar instead of alcohol. So, so these are those bootlegged uh, candies and those illegal bakeries. Uh, it, it, it is quite fun because you know, it's, it's the one, one sentence I can say and it's interesting in, uh, in itself. So it's a free-to-play game, story-driven, which is interesting. I think that was a challenge for us to make a game uh, which is, in fact, a story game. I mean, there's a story we wanted to tell, but uh, we decided, as it is a m mainly a mobile game, we decided to tell it as, uh, uh, as a free-to-play <coughs> game. Uh, and the core mechanics, uh, the core mechanism in the game, there are different puzzles. So it's a puzzle-based, story-driven, free-to-play mobile, mobile game. Uh, development was, was made by uh, our company, by AD Games, and we have uh, we have uh, three publishers. <laughs> we, in iOS, we go with Chiringo. On Android, you can uh, take this game. Uh, it was uh, it was uh, the publisher was was Noodle Cake, and on Windows 8, it was uh, CCG Company. Uh, so, as you can see, it is um, we decided to go multi-platform, and I will uh, say a few words about it later. Uh, I'll tell you about first about the core gameplay in the game. We have those, as in many games, we have have this big gameplay cycle and the small gameplay cycles. This big uh, gameplay cycle is uh, it, it, it is the strategic part of the game, the part that that uh, compels you to go back to the game when you put it away, because uh, we, as developers we would like the players to spend all their time w with, with our game, but we must accept the fact that sometimes the game must be put away and we wanted to have some games for the players to come back. So, so this this big cycle is mainly it's it's a story for progress. The player is interested what's what's next, what ho what happens next, and there's uh, many many layers of development. You develop you you develop your detective office. You skill up your character. So so this is the strategic part. And there's the small cycle. Uh, that's the mechanism that 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 compels you to not to put away the game to just keep playing. And it's more tactical. I mean, it's many small decisions in a in a in a short short time frame, and it's uh, uh, it's, it's the puzzles, and it's about earning in-game currency and unlocking the progress in the story. I will tell about it more later. We start with the big cycle. So 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 the main progress in, in the game is solving cases. There are um, several something about 50 uh, major cases you can, you can solve in the game. 
and this part is about storytelling. You get these characters you can relate to, you get this main plot, that you, the story arc you, you, you can follow. And it's also about earning uh, cash and, and, and stars. And you spend the cash to uh, upgrading your office. You get your office screen, you can, you can buy you furniture, decoration, and stuff like this. And you spend the stars to upgrade, upgrade your character, buy your skills, upgrade the skills you have. So it's, you know, it's a bit of role-playing mechanisms here. I mean, you have your character you, and you upgrade them. And the small cycle, it's mainly based on what we call newspaper cases. I mean, as a detective, you not always have the big case. You have to, you know, uh, wade through the newspaper, looking for ads and making those small cases. And it's basically it's grind, grinding. It's re reputable puzzle gameplay when you grind currency. Uh, and uh, the main parts that you that come in play here is uh, you use a lot of tools um, to, you know, to solve the cases. You earn in-game currency and by uh, solving the newspaper cases you can unlock the story progress. Uh, it, it works like this, that uh, to unlock, for example, to unlock the uh, next major, major case you need to solve 12 newspapers or, or 10 newspapers. So you can grind for as um, you know, quick sessions in in a bus, or you know, when you have five minutes, uh, five, five minutes times, and uh, you gain the currency, and you work for, for to unlock the, the 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 main the main story, and then when you're ready, you spend some more time solving the big case, and then you go back to the to the newspapers. And scope of the game. Uh, at the release day, you had three chapters with uh, 50 ma major cases. The uh, main story arc we plan, it's five chapters, more or less 90 major cases. Uh, the pool of newspaper cases, it's about uh, 200 puzzles at the moment, and uh, they are randomly served to the players at different tiers of difficulty. And at the day of the release, it was at least uh, 30 hours of, of gameplay. So. Uh, because it's a, it's a, it's not an endless game. You can finish it, but uh, you know, 30 hours it's uh, is a time scope. You know, uh, many people, uh, people like games that didn't have uh, this time scope. So, so it, as 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 we analyze the data, it took the ma majority of the player players something like two to three months to finish the game at their at their own pace. So it's it's quite a lot of entertainment basically for free. And uh, how the main uh, mechanics work. Uh, the main mechanics are those puzzles you have to solve to, to solve the investigation. Uh, there are some clues and evidence at the board, board and you connect the puzzle with your finger and for long chains you get some, some extra puzzles that help you in the in the later uh, stages of the of the investigation, and there is a limitation on the number of moves and some target numbers of, of each clue you have to you, you have to connect you collect so you so you can basically fail or su succeed, and that that is the basic uh, level. And for the players who wanted some some more depth in the in the mechanics, we had uh, we, we prepared a lot of extra mechanism. We have this in these major cases. We have this we call it hard evidence that uh, when you solve the basic puzzles and you still have some uh, extra move, moves left, you can collect extra evidence and this help you in the in the la later stages of the investigation. We have this candy go government candy truck. It's a like a bonus phase when you just collect puzzles and if you collect uh, enough, you get you get uh, extra this extra in-game currency, this premium currency. You have some bonus candies, bonus cash, and some challenges like you know collect I don't know 90, 90 coins or, or stuff like this. So there is uh, many extra mechanisms uh, for for the players that, that like to you know go deeper in the game. You don't have to do this, but if you do, you get extra benefits. Uh, and we have also the other mini games apart from the basic puzzles. The, these are used in the major cases and these are uh, suspect, city search and crime, crime scene. And uh, they are linked with the, with the 
basic puzzles that, uh, in, in this way that, that the evidence you collect on the puzzle board help you in, uh, in these extra, extra stages. And uh, first, uh, witnesses, they are heavily influenced by the uh, Guess Who game. Uh, you just basically have to find the person that meets all the criteria, for example, has brown hair, doesn't wear a hat, and stuff like this. Uh, I, uh, they are connected with the basic puzzles in, in such a way that the number of questions you have is uh, dependent on the, on the photo evidence you collect on the puzzles. So, so basically you have to prepare and collect enough photo to, to have, you know, have enough questions to, to solve the puzzle. Uh, the other um, uh, extra uh, game is uh, crime scene search, and it's like you know, uh, hot or cold. You have this your intuition meter that uh, tells you how close you are to the solution, and you have to find the object that that is the solution. Uh, you have a limited number of uh, let's say moves because everything you do takes you some some uh, some time. And uh, the maximum intuition you have at your disposal is, is based on the number of fingerprints you collected on the puzzles. So if you didn't do especially well on the puzzles, you may not have the maximum intuition at your disposal. So uh, there is then this you know, part where you have to guess. And you, for example, you know you are looking for a, a for a weapon, so you just have to look at the items in the room you know is the correct room, and, and just make a wild guess. And the third mini game is a city search, and it's uh, you know based. You have to basically find a city block that uh, meets all the criteria. That's more than four blocks from hospital, and not more than two blocks from from a restaurant. And extra difficulty is that the. Uh, icons on the on the map are hidden, and you have to spend your uh, basic resource, the, the the footsteps clues, to see where the where the hospital is, where the restaurant is. The more you know the city, the more you know the game. You can make some uh, you, you can guess. Yeah. Uh, for example, I know this is a park with the hospital. Yeah, and I can guess this is a monument, not a restaurant. So. This is uh, all puzzles work in such a way that if you collected enough uh, puzzles, uh, you can solve it. it it's almost a no-brainer. But if you didn't do especially well, you have to have to actually use your mind. Uh, and if you fail the basic puzzles, you fail the case. If you fail uh, the extra stages, you get less stars for completing the game, and uh, you spend the stars to, to progress your character. So basically. You have some incentive to go back and, and redo the cases you, you didn't max uh, up. And as it is a free-to-play game, we uh, must say some words about the monetization. We have two types of currencies. There are candies and detective bugs. And this is the grind currency. You earn a lot of it and you spend a lot of it. And candies are this premium currency for some extra stuff. Uh, and actually, uh, we use the theme, uh, the sugar prohibition, to uh, make the, uh, uh, the premium currency more believable. Because when candies are uh, banned, uh, it is logical you use candies to earn some extra favors from, from I don't know, the people who del deliver you uh, furniture or, or stuff like this. So uh, in this way, we didn't have crystals or some abstract a premium currency, but the premium currency is based, uh, is, is you know rooted in the in the setting, and uh, the uh, the green grind currency. You know, everyone knows that being a detective is mostly about earning money uh, for a living. So so the th themes <laughs> are matched with the with the monetization, and it helps you. You spend candies on can spend candies on unlocking major cases on faster deliv delivery or of newspapers or furniture and stuff like this. You can buy some extra moves to finish your puzzles. Uh, there are some elements of, of uh, character custom customization or decorations that you can buy only for, for the premium currency. And there are some premium tools, skills, upgrades, and stuff like this. But you also can earn the premium currency in the game. And actually, 
there's a lot of ways you can earn the premium currency by bonus candies and the candy truck and puzzles for long chains of some puzzles you got candies there's a daily bonus there are candies hidden uh, in the city search and the crime scene search so we can actually find them there are some challenges achievements and advertisements so theoretically you can earn all the premium currency you need and you don't have to pay but we are happy you pay uh, for, 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 for the game and now uh, I'll tell you about as we already know how the game works I will tell you about the production this is our uh, previous game puzzle craft it was a, a puzzle city simulation you basically collected uh, uh, raw materials and uh, build your village. And I'm talking about it because uh, we try to make games that use the mechanics we already know and use the knowledge we already know. So it will be partly a story of how we came from a city sim to a story driven uh, free to play. And w when we started the production, we knew we have to use some mechanisms we used in, in puzzle craft because that was the know-how we have, we had, and we wanted to use it, and we knew we had to add something new. Uh, another important decision was to decide from the very beginning that that will be a free-to-play game, because with Puzzlecraft we started as a premium game, uh, then we added some uh, in-app purchases, and then we decided to make it a free game with in-app purchases and it went okay, the, the, the market responded okay, but, uh, but it was not a natural decision. Here, from the very beginning, <coughs> we knew that we are making a free-to-play game, so uh, implementing the, all, all the uh, monetization mechanisms was not so awkward as in, as in Puzzlecraft. And we knew we are taking a risk, but because uh, the, another case solved was not such a casual game as Puzzlecraft, we knew we will lose some of the uh, some of our players that are satisfied with you know collecting chickens, but uh, uh, for different uh, for different uh, mini games and and lot of extra mechanisms may be too much for them, and we hoped we will uh, gain some we gain some extra uh, players players that are interested in detective games in story games that. Uh, players that like to solve puzzles but are not so casual and we knew, also knew that uh, another case solve will be a text heavy game that will have a lot of dialogue in it and we knew that is that was a risk because the more text you have in a game the more problems you have uh, with the text and uh, <laughs> these are these are screenshots from my I iPad uh, that I use uh, at work and I mainly use it to make screenshots from the game we work on you know to report the bug or, or stuff like this and this is when we work on puzzle craft and here is when we work on another case solved so we also have some as you see some decisions to the color uh, scale we will use and stuff like this this blue block here is when I was getting married so it's not important to the uh, <laughs> to the production uh, and uh, so, something about the team and, and methodology. We have, uh, at the moment, we have three coders, uh, three uh, graphics uh, or artists, two designers, uh, and finally uh, one QA guy. Because when we started, we just made you know tests. Yeah, but, uh, whoever had some time uh, just tested the game, mainly me. And we believe in instant prototyping and uh, iterative de development, that means that we have an idea, we uh, prototype it, test it, and then we polish it uh, as we go. Uh, so we starting on a game with lots of placeholders, and uh, then just we improve the mechanisms that work, and we cut out the mechanisms that, that, doesn't, uh, that don't work. And the time frame, we Theoretically, we start, started in October uh, 2012, and we re released the game uh, in uh, 20 uh, on, on 20th uh, of March uh, this year. But at the same time, we were still working on Puzzlecraft, and 
uh, in November last year we started a new a new project. So so the rea realistic production cycle is that we spend two months uh, of, on pre-production, some you know basic concepting and basic prototyping. Then there there is a nine months of of real production, and then about three months of polishing and you know. Uh, Talking with the publishers, it always takes time. Some final, uh, final, you know, polish. So we learned that we are not able to make a game we are satisfied with in a time uh, frame less than nine months. Uh, but uh, but we also uh, try to to work on two projects at the same time. So so uh, this is a realistic time frame. And the technology. The game was uh, made on Cocos uh, Today X, and we use Tiled. It's an uh, editor, uh, and we use it for for the city search and for uh, for the crime scene search. Uh, we use Super Anim plugin for for hunting animations. Uh, we use the plugin for social for Facebook. I will tell something more about it. And we use external co configuration files. I, I mean that the actual gameplay and actual balance is separa separated from the code. We use this huge Excel files with all the data about uh, the probabilities on the puzzles, about you know what icons you use to what puzzles, about what uh, I know what skills you have, what tools you have, how much this tools cost, uh, how what what furniture you have in your office and, and stuff like this. So we can practically totally rebalance the game without making a new build, which is quite okay because then coders can work on the code and designers, I mean me and, and, and my, my friend are just working on the numbers and we can just swap the configuration file and, and see if it works. And what went okay? So uh, the first thing that went okay is that we managed to make a game that was, that was well received. We managed to mm, make a game that was bigger and more complicated than our previous game, than, than Puzzle Craft. And we managed to merge the puzzles with the main story, mer merge the four types of puzzles into you know, one working uh, mechanism. We managed to make a game that was easily updatable and easily portable, because with Puzzle Craft, that was a pain in the neck. Uh, I, I mean, it was totally hard to port and it was almost impossible to update. I will tell you something more about it later. Now we learned our lesson and, and we managed mm, practically uh, simultaneous uh, release on, on, on three platforms, you know, plus minus two months. And we didn't repeat uh, any mistakes from Puzzlecraft, which is okay, and we managed a bit by mistake to uh, to make a really cool implementation of advertisements in the game, and I will also tell you a few words about it later. Uh, and the character creation that that really went okay. We uh, we probably could just release it as a separate application for making you know <laughs> your avatars uh, for Facebook and stuff like this. Uh, what went not so okay? As we said. Uh, we're testing, yeah, in our free time. So I was for, for the for the most of the production. I was the main tester, and when you are testing your own design, it not always works. So we had some unexpected difficulty peaks, some totally unplanned player frustration. We managed to uh, smooth it out in our first update, but still at the release, the game. There were some moments when the game was not working as we expected. Uh, we, uh, we also had this, you know, secret cases you can find and unlock uh, hidden in other cases, and they were so secret that basically nobody managed to find them. And uh, people were asking us on Facebook or on our support mail, how, how the hell I, can I? find the secret, ca secret cases and we were like, you know, in this case we have to go to the office and search every folder uh, and in one of the files, when you click on the it, which is totally counterintuitive, you will find the secret case. So 
in the app that we added some visual cues, uh, you know, directing you to the secret cases. But at the least, they, they were basically hardcore to secret. And we have some problems with Polish localization, which <coughs> totally surprised us because, you know, we are from Poland, and, but we're, we're writing the game in English, and then trans basically translating it into Polish. And we, uh, we thought it would be quick. It wasn't so quick, so we worked a bit over time on it. And the same guy who was writing the dialogues was translating them to Polish. So the f and it's not OK to work on your own text and to try to translate your own text. So the first version of the Polish dialogues were, no, I've read better. Uh, so we had to spend some time to, you know, basically to make the Polish dialogue as, as good as the English, which was totally surprising for us. We had some problems with Facebook integration, and that's the risk you take when you use uh, external plugins. They are easy, you don't have to work on them, but if something, were, you know, doesn't work, sometimes you just have the answer, yeah, yeah, we know it's not working. We are working on it. But you have the problem in your game. So probably uh, sometime in the future we'll just have to code our own plugin to, to handle Facebook. And the interface sometimes was a bit clumsy. Uh, that is a, you know, a never-ending work for us, working on, in, on the interface because we, there is a lot of stuff we, to, we want to show to the player and to fit it all on the screen, it takes lots of iteration and we are still not always <coughs> mega satisfied with the results. And there were some awkward situations you know, with this story versus gameplay because we have this mechanism that uh, when you fail a mini game, you can ask your friends to help you solve it. You know, uh, these are the mm, characters from the game. But sometimes, when you are searching the, your police friend because she disappeared, you can ask her to find her. That's a bit awkward, but it doesn't happen very often. But you know, there is always this part between story and gameplay when, yeah, something that is meant as a pure gameplay mechanism is interpreted as part of the story, and you cannot escape from it. So probably <coughs> we will do something about it, like adding adding uh, some you know custom dialogues. Like, so you are so lame that you have to ask me to help you find me. Okay, <laughs> sometimes you know <laughs> that, that's the that's the solution. And there are some curious case studies. You know, once we thought we would have this slot machine in our game that you were, you, it should, it, it was planned to work in such a way that you could find a token during the household, the, the crime scene search, then in your office this slot machine will pop up, you will use the tokens and spin and win some things, you know, we're playing a lot of, uh, of Jetpack Joyride at the time and the slot machine is from Jetpack Joyride, but, you know, it basically, totally didn't fit to the game, so we dropped it, but it worked for some time in the game, but when we saw it implemented, it was like, eh, no, 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 let's drop it. Then we thought it would be cool to have lip sync, yeah? The people moving their lips as, uh, as they are talking. But first, we use the size of the mouth as one of the clues in the Guess Who mini game. So while talking, Theoretically, it wouldn't be so obvious if someone has a big mouth or a small mouth. And the other thing is we would have used a lot of our uh, place at, at, at the, at the uh, of our graphics yeah, to, to draw all the uh, mouths in all the phoneme states. So we just decided it would be too much and then uh, we were, uh, when we knew it was a good decision, that was the moment when we decided w that we won't, vo uh, we will not do voice over the game because that would be, that would be a lot of megabytes. 
lot of cash and a lot of work. So basically, when you start a dialogue, uh, the audio file you you hear is something like blah 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 blah. So yeah, the lip sync would have yeah wouldn't have worked. And we have some dilemmas with guess, guess who? People people are asking us. You know, you can ask uh, how tall a person is, what color uh, what, what color is their hair, if they have have you know big nose or a small nose. But I cannot ask if this person is is black or white. And yes, that was a uh, that was a decision on, on our side because you know you have to phrase word the question and what would the question question would like. Is the person black? Is the person Afro-American? Is the person Caucasian? Okay, that could have worked, but we, we use uh, the brown uh, color for Hispanic persons. So the question, is the person Afro-American, wouldn't work. And what's, uh, uh, and, and what's more, this is asking for troubles, because if you make this uh, a part of your game, it's basically racial profiling, yeah? Someone could, okay, so you have 50% of uh, Asian criminals in your games. But, uh, are, do you have something against people of color? So sometimes it's not so obvious, yeah? We started, okay, yeah, so it's a good question because yeah, you can see it at, at, the, at the first glance, but when you think of a game as a product may, made for different people in different countries with different cu cultural refer references, some mechanics are not safe and not good to use. And uh, uh, apart from it, it made the Guess Who game easier than we, than we wanted. Yeah, you know, we have the City Search mini game, and we basically have this huge city planned and we use parts of it in different cases. And there's a cautionary tale because when we were researching the city we decided it should look like some real city because uh, you know we wanted to have this concise feel of architecture and stuff like this. We find the city we wanted, we talked with our graphic teams and said here are the references, plan the buildings which are cartoonish, but still they are based on some real architecture, plant these buildings on this city. And then we hired a new designer and I said to him, Paweł, we need some background on the city. How the city is, you know, uh, structured in neighborhoods, uh, in districts, what is the history of the city? We want we want you to plan the city on a real city, uh, and decide which districts you would use in different cases and stuff, that, stuff like this. And the problem was, uh, yeah, I made a mistake when I was to talking with the graphic teams. I said Baltimore, but when I was talking with my designer, by mistake I said Boston. So basically, we have this all American Baltimore city <laughs> because <laughs> the graphics is, is based on Baltimore and the whole history districts and stuff like this is based on Boston because I asked for Boston. And it's funny <laughs> and, and it worked because sometimes you have to, it's good to take a step back and make something that's based on something, but yeah, but that was the funniest mistake we made. And we had some uh, good practices. We separate balance from the code. That's what, what I said. We uh, changed the save system. In Puzzle Draft, we basically saved the game as it was. So uh, we had this configuration file, but as we played, we saved it at every time. And when we released an update, and we, uh, we decided in this update that, for example, a workshop would unlock a new building. So for the players who didn't build the workshop, it worked OK, but if you had the workshop built, we have to code if you have the workshop built, then unlock new building. So it was a pain in the, uh, it was a pain to, you know, to, to code it. And now we are just saving what skills you have or, or what furniture you have 
but then the game on load is recreated from the from the configuration file. It, it just checks what what do you have, but all the actions and un unlocks and stuff like this are taken from the file, so we can uh, change it uh, and rebalance in updates. And that was a huge part of know-how for us. And uh, we are starting analyzing data and players' feedback and reacting to it. And it went okay. So the reception was great. We had uh, we had something like two million downloads. First week it was a million downloads. Average upstart rating is almost five stars. Uh, the uh, released version was four stars. Then we fixed some some uh, some problems the players had, and now uh, the game is near five stars. So 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 the players appreciated our our feedback. Uh, on Metacritics we have like sixty seven percent because you know when you are writing uh, a, mm, a review of a free to play game, it's posh to write. And it's a bad game because it's free to play. So it would have been, you know, eight or nine, but it's a free to play, so it's just a six. But I will tell you that it doesn't matter at, at all. I mean, uh, when you are making a free to play games, uh, reviews on, on websites are nothing. They, does, they do not influence the, the downloads and the sales in any way. We have uh, a Facebook page, uh, almost uh, 100,000 likes, and we received our f uh, first fan art. Some girl was, you know, I'm so into my detective <coughs> flirting with this, with this burglar, and I, I think they are such a cute couple. So I wrote, uh, I, I made this picture, you know, this is my detective talking with the, with the, with the thief, and this is how they, you know, solve the cases together, and it was like, wow, yeah? And this brings us to, uh, to another decision we have to make. Because we, we have uh, this problem uh, if the main character should be male or female. And we decided to uh, give the choice to the player. So when you are uh, choosing a gender, you, you get some extra stuff. I mean, some, some uh, clothes and face elements, yeah, like you know uh, the makeup. Are uh, just for for girls and mustaches are just for just for for, for boys. Uh, we have uh, modified dialogues and uh, <coughs> some separate personal plots, relations with other with other characters. And it was a lot of work, but it it was a good decision decision because at the moment it's almost half half. Uh, Fifty four percent players are playing a female detective and. Uh, almost uh, 46% are playing a, a male, so so it was it was a good decision to, to give this choice to, to players because there's a lot of people, you know, million and million, a lot of people who, who appreciate uh, it. And now let's talk about business. Uh, free to play was a good decision, and we the ads were. Uh, implemented okay. Our our uh, publisher said, as you know, we we need to have ads, uh, and we, uh, our proposition is the ads uh, that it will be full screen ads at the end of every case. And we said, like, mm, we don't like this idea, but we have this phone in your office, and we had some funny phone ringing animation we didn't know how to use. So we decided that uh, when the uh, ad system will have some uh, uh, advertisements for you, the phone will, will ring, and you will tap on the phone, and then you will see the the, the, adver the advertisements, the, the the commercials, and uh, it went went okay. At the very beginning, uh, uh, we had like 10% of our income coming from from the from the ads, and uh, it was the best implemented ads. Uh, in the game uh, with with our publishers, so uh, so basically it is good to give you the choice if you want to see the ads. Then you don't see as a player you don't see the ads as a nuisance. I, you see it as as a tool you can use to to earn some currency. So that was okay. And and the business was better than in Puzzle Craft. We reached a break-even point after two months. So so we basically now we are earning. We, we have all, all our costs covered, 
and a flow rate that uh, our data, uh, the data system we use is okay. I mean, we actually use it. Uh, look at at uh, the model, for example. Uh, we use it to to find the difficulties peaks uh, uh, peaks we we didn't plan and to 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 change them. And uh, this is uh, our two, uh, two first months of, of, of downloads. This is uh, US <coughs> overall, uh, and this is US games. So in in games was in the first uh, uh, 250 games as as far as downloads are you know, uh, as as we talk about downloads, and this is uh, uh, top grossing. So we are still in the first five. Uh, uh, 500 games as uh, you know uh, we have a team of 11 um, 11 people so so it's it's okay for us and as you can see uh, as we planned uh, the whole game as a free to play from the very beginning uh, the income is not dropping very dramatically it's it's practically flat as 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 uh, you know in puzzle craft it was like yeah. so uh, so it's okay and and people are using it and are liking it, so so I think we, we, we managed to make a free play game that is earning for our next next game, and it's not seen as a as a nuisance. Uh, we sub we plan the support for the game from the very beginning, uh, so we uh, the update uh, first update with, with the fourth chapter is ready and is waiting in, in Apple for for approval, and uh, we are working for uh, on the fifth chapter, so. We are working on the whole story arc we, we planned from the very beginning, and if uh, people will still like our game, we will probably make some some extra uh, uh, updates because you know keeping your game alive is uh, is an important thing to do, especially when it's a free to play game because you get new users and you give some some stuff to the users you already have, and they have more time to spend money in your game basically uh, and to enjoy it. And uh, we uh, already are going for the for the big fish. Uh, we had to make some changes, you know, at scroll bars and uh, you know how the mouse uh, handling. So it do some some extra extra work, but but it will also give us some some extra players uh, because there are a lot of people who are not into mobile, but they are playing casual games on the PC. So so this is this is quite quite fun. Uh, you can at the moment you can play another case solved on uh, iOS, Android, uh, Windows uh, computers with Windows 8, and and on your Windows Phone. At the moment, we are supporting the high memory devices, and we are working on support of low memory devices. And also, we are hiring. I mean, we are looking for programmers, uh, graphics, and, and designers. Uh, if you are interested, uh, or if you know someone who is interested, uh, mail us at, at jobs at the games play in the PR. And uh, we should finish in like three minutes, and I have still uh, 40 slides I would like to show you. Uh, so this is an appendix to this presentation. We will we'll, uh, post this presentation on SlideShare, so you can see it in your spare time. Treat it as a teaser, you know. Uh, this here there will be a lot of uh, screens from the prototype phase or concept phase, prototype phase, and final game, just for you to see <coughs> how the how the game changed. And I will start. This is the first puzzle prototype, the first ever. We get some, you know, randomly flipped puzzles. Here is a hard coded list of all tools and skills. We're just I I experimenting with the ideas. Uh, here is the first concept. We decided that tools are on the left, some new puzzles. We knew we would like some adventure or story bar here. We had no idea how it should like. Here is case description. Now nobody was interested in it, so, so we dropped it. And here is another take with new puzzles. This is a placeholder for photos. As you can see, we are working on placeholders. And here are we experimenting with some upper menu bar, mm, not a good idea. Uh, still, here are the puzzles you have to collect, and here is basically nothing. We didn't know how to use this space. We knew, knew we wanted it, but we had, had no idea how to use it. 
Curia tools and skills all together and new, uh, new donuts. And here are another donuts and lots of empty, empty space. We decided that we wanted to show the player how many moves they have. This is our first approach and some taps here, not working very good. And here is another uh, version of showing how many moves you have. And here is the bonus candy task that looks like a pile of garba garbage and nobody understood it. So we swapped it to, to a candy here. And another donuts with some vicious violet, you know, icing. Ah, not very good. And here we decided to show players what tax task will, will, will be next, but it's not a final implementation. And another donuts. And as you can see, here uh, are the uh, clues you collected. And here we are showing uh, what you have to collect to, to, to finish the case. So we found a use for, uh, for, for this part of, of, of screen. And final tabs, we have tabs and, and swipe. So not tabs here, but I'll just switch like this and the final donuts. These were the taste here. And here is the story of the story bar. We knew we have to show the player what they have to collect, and we knew we had this something nice here, and it took us like I think it was maybe two months to realize that we should show the players what they have to collect in this nice place here. It was like our lead programmer said, you know, this space is useless. I would rather, I would rather show the players what they have to collect here, or, or you know, or we, we, we just drop it. And we said, yeah, wow, that's actually a good idea, yeah? Let's do it. And he, here are the next tasks. This is the final implementation, because it appeared that as long as they were uh, col colored, they were perceived as something active, and people were collecting, for example, foot footprints that the game wasn't registering. Because the mechanism is, you just have to co you have to collect the thing that 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 is already visible. So it took us some time. Here are different approaches to the bonus candy. Yeah, for the pile of garbage, some billboard to just a candy. This is the hard evidence. This is how it was implemented, and these are our different approaches. We call it a uh, Durex uh, <laughs> advertisement. It wasn't working. Okay. This is our first approach to the city search. Um, um, mm -hmm. We are really des desperate. Then, okay, we decided on this sort of isometric view, but we started with this fog of war. So basically, you started the game and you were seeing a lot of, you know, black space. You were not looking at the beautiful city you had. No, that wasn't working very well. See, here is uh, machine attacks. We decided uh, that you know we need these icons to show that you have to search this the city blocks. Mm, not good. Uh, these are red and fog of war, the worst ever. And this is how it is Im implemented. You know, it started uh, when we, I, 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 I was talking with, with the other designer, I said, you know, make some, some, some city maps and, and use the, the fog of war to hide the icons. But I thought that he would use it all over the place. And he used it just to hide the icons. And it was a brilliant idea. It was like, wow, yeah, that's what we wanted. Uh, and yeah, so, so it, it shows that sometimes a coincidence causes you uh, we have to finish. So the, the uh, yeah, I, I am prepared for it. So so the rest of the of the screens uh, you will see. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, very fast presentation. Yeah, thank here are different icons we are working on. So thank you, folks. Uh, folks, that's all. Uh, you you can see all, all the progress on on, uh, on the slide share. And yeah, thank you for attending. Thank you.